This is primarily a Star Wars channel, but it's also a collectibles channel. I have a lot of 70s and 80s vintage collectibles. So since Super Bowl 50 is coming up between Peyton Manning and the Broncos and the Carolina Panthers who have only lost one game, I thought I'd share my set of 1970s McDonald's and Coca-Cola History of the Super Bowl books. It came in three volumes, Super Bowl 1 through Super Bowl 11. Super Bowl 12 was the Cowboys and the Broncos. You had to order a Big Mac and you got one of these for free. Compliments of McDonald's and Coca-Cola. The covers feature excellent watercolor illustrations and they're drawn from photographs. So they also have a little bit of pencil work showing. And they feature excellent photography. Each Super Bowl features a really nice two page spread. So let's flip through these real quick. You have the recap with nice flavor text. There's Bart Starr, the Green Bay quarterback. You have a feature on the man of the game, in this case Green Bay's Max McGee. This page you have a feature about behind the scenes. The thing about early NFL games, including the Super Bowl, is that the TV networks did not save the broadcast tapes of the games. There's a recent article that said that a viewer did in fact tape the game, Super Bowl I, he did it on professional equipment and stored it away thinking that it would be worth something to put his kids through college one day. However, the NFL only wanted a small amount of money for it, so his son never sold it to them and they won't let him release it or sell it to anyone else because it's their copyright. You have Super Notes trivia for all the games. And on these yellow pages you have the lineups for each team and the coaching staff. You have a game summary of scoring and statistics and season recaps for both teams and the scores of their games. Here's Super Bowl 2. Green Bay beat the Raiders. The Jets upset the Colts in the Orange Bowl. It's Joe Willie Namath. And Don Shula coached the Colts before the Dolphins. Kansas City won against Minnesota. Len Dawson, the Kansas City quarterback. Doc Severinsen from The Tonight Show. And the back cover. Volume 2, Super Bowls 5 through 8. Last second field goal. Colts beat the Cowboys in the Orange Bowl. And Chuck Howley was the man of the game in a losing effort. So Dallas was experienced and motivated against the young, overachieving Dolphins team. And the Dolphins only scored three points. Cowboys won their first Super Bowl. Miami used that experience and motivation to win the Super Bowl the next year and go undefeated. The only perfect team so far. And they had to win the AFC Championship in Pittsburgh because of a rotating TV schedule back then. That was a week after the Immaculate Reception. So they had their work cut out for them. So 17-0 and is 17-0. and 73 team is widely regarded as a better team than the 72 undefeated team. They had a tougher schedule. They gave up 21 less points. They dropped two games, but one was to a very good Oakland team at the beginning of the season, and they rolled over Oakland in the AFC Championship game. One of the few times in the 70s that they could actually beat Oakland, though. Miami was the first former AFL team to be favored in the Super Bowl. Larry Zonka set a rushing record. Miami was the first team in the Super Bowl to score on its opening drive. So overall, unfortunately, an underrated team. The most overlooked dominating Super Bowl performance. There's the back cover. Compliments of McDonald's and Coke. You can also get a souvenir poster of Super Bowl 12. So the third book is Super Bowl 9 through 11 with statistics up to that point. Because Super Bowl 12 
was going to be the Cowboys and Broncos in the Superdome. That's after the Raiders upset the Dolphins in a divisional game in the infamous Sea of Hands game. And in this Super Bowl, Pittsburgh won their first. Art Rooney finally got his trophy. And the Vikings, a really good team, unfortunately lost another Super Bowl. That was played in Tulane Stadium in Louisiana outdoors because the Superdome wasn't complete. And a classic battle between Pittsburgh and Dallas. That was in the Orange Bowl, and they would play again in the Orange Bowl in another classic game. Lynn Swan was an excellent receiver back then. He was the man of that game. Terry Bradshaw singing, I'm so lonesome I could cry. But he didn't because they won the Super Bowl. And the movie Black Sunday was filmed there. There's Pete Rozelle, the longtime commissioner. Cowboys actually made the Super Bowl with a 12-5 record. Oakland was a perennial playoff contender and loser, and they finally broke through and won the Super Bowl. And the Vikings lost yet another one, unfortunately. It's a really colorful illustration for the program and the ticket. The receivers like Fred Belitnikoff, man of the game, used to stick them on their socks. They wiped it on their hands so they could catch the football better. They didn't use gloves back in those days. And the Viking mascot. Now, Oakland lost one game that season. It was to New England. At the beginning of the season, 48-17, to but New England was having a really good first part of the season. The rest of the booklet are the Super Bowl records up to that point. Here's a quick look if you want to pause it. Here's rushing, touchdowns, and passing. And passing continued. On this spread, defense, interceptions, special teams... Top 10 television sports events up to that time. And overall television audiences of all time. My favorite team in the 70s and 80s were the Dolphins. That's an undefeated season pennant that my grandma got me. And the 72 Dolphins can pop the champagne because the Panthers lost one game. So let's take a look at Super Bowl VII spread as an example. It starts off with the Roman numerals of the Super Bowl and classic 70's artwork of the helmets. Then we have the basic information of the teams, the date, the winning conference, head coaches, season records, most valuable player was Jake Scott of safety for making an interception in the end zone. Site was Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, paid attendance, gross receipts, television and radio was NBC, and the weather conditions were pretty nice, and the playing surface was grass. It repeats the artwork from the cover, which when an illustrator does these, they're much larger than that. That's Manny Fernandez making the tackle who easily could have been the MVP. The joke amongst the Dolphins players was that he had bad eyesight, so they didn't want to give him the keys to the Most Valuable Player Award car. Then it has a really nice recap of the game. I'll scroll through it so you can see what this one's like. So you can see that it has a little bit more flavor to the writing than just a simple recap of the game. The Dolphins were said to be the most somber undefeated team. The reason being they only scored three points against the Cowboys in the previous Super Bowl. So to a man they wanted to win this Super Bowl and they didn't care if they were undefeated. That gives you an overview of how the game went. Nice thing is that each one diagrams the big play of the game. They use a classic football diagram style. And there's a caption. Continues on the other page with Gary Premian's goof. It would have been 17 to nothing and that would have been poetic justice. There's MVP Jake Scott intercepting Billy Kilmer in the end zone. And he wore 13 like Dan Marino would eventually wear. So it has some really good quotes that give you an insight into how the game played out. On this next page you have a feature on Manny Fernandez and a photo of a Super Bowl patch and super notes of insightful trivia. I have a Miami Dolphins helmet buggy for the electric football games. Commercial time is $200,000 per minute. Washington's quarterback Sonny Jurgensen was injured, otherwise it could have been a different game. 
these are my originals and you can see that I read the Dolphins one a lot and we never did get the third one however many years later on eBay I found a bunch of them in a lot and it didn't cost much either and I put them in acid free sleeves with boards and I keep them in a white box I was going to sell some on eBay but I kinda like having this many it's a hassle to sell them on eBay and people really don't pay that much for them anymore this Star Wars NFL news just in Jabba the Hutt is having a Super Bowl party at his palace halftime entertainment is Jabba the Hutt's dancers and here's the cheerleading squad I'm gonna have a Slave Girl Leia video coming up I also have a collection of Jedi Knight action figures. I'll get back to my regularly scheduled Star Wars videos. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for more. Enjoy Super Bowl 50.